Not every parent deserves a child, but every child deserves a loving, caring parent. And unfortunately for Kaylee Priest, that is not what she got in this life. She got a parent who couldn't care less about her, who valued her own self-image and posting to social media more than taking care of her little baby girl. This case is going to frustrate the hell out of you once you hear just how poorly this little girl was treated, yet everyone in her life absolutely and miserably failed her. It's tragic, devastating, and so, so heartbreaking. But before we get into the case, I want to take a quick moment to talk about one way I found to create better, healthier habits, and that is where fume comes in. The flavored air category is quickly becoming a leading alternative to vaping and smoking, leading towards a whole new movement of better habits led by today's sponsor, Fume. Fume is an award-winning flavored air device which draws flavor into your mouth. It's not the same thing as vaping. It's not a vape. There's no vapor, no nicotine, and uses non-toxic flavors. You can take it with you anywhere you go, filling that need to have something to reach for and bring to your mouth, helping you break your habit. They come in a variety of flavors, including crisp mint and orange vanilla. Through flavored air, you can get that oral fixation with a bit of flavor through a passive diffusion system that utilizes no electronics, vapor, or combustion. It's also a very safe alternative with Fume continuously investing in third-party studies to ensure the safety of their products. I personally like the crisp mint flavor. It helps keep my mouth feeling minty fresh all throughout the day. I also like the feel of the fume device. It's nice and heavy. It feels really nice to just grab it and have it on me for when I'm out with friends or I just need something to do with my hands or my mouth. Now, fume has served over 300,000 customers and you can be the next success story. For a limited time, you can use my code Rachel Shannon to get your free topper. It's the perfect accessory for your fume device. You slip it on to your mouthpiece for a softer, warmer feel. It's also chewable for those who like to fidget, and it's reusable. So head to tryfume.com, that's tryfum.com, and use code Rachel Shannon, or scan the QR code shown here for your free topper when you order your journey pack today. Thanks again so much to Fume for partnering with me on today's video. With that being said, let's get into the case. Today, we are going to be discussing the horrific case of Kaylee Priest. Kaylee Jade Priest was born January 31st, 2017 to her then 18-year-old mother, Nicola Priest, in Brigham, England. As far as I've seen, we don't know who Kaylee's father is. However, when Kaylee was around a year old in 2018, Nicola started a relationship with Dan Gregory. Despite not being the biological father to Kaylee, he took on the role of stepfather very quickly and with enthusiasm. He quickly bonded with Kaylee, helping to raise her for the two years he and Nicola were together. At first, Dan, Nicola, and Kaylee all lived together with Dan's mom, but after about eight months, Nicola found herself pregnant once again, now with Dan's baby boy. After this, the three moved out of Dan's mom's place and into their own flat in Kinghurst. According to Dan, Kaylee was a happy, bubbly, energetic little girl. She was full of life and laughter, always smiling and lighting up the lives of everyone around her. According to Dan, Nicola definitely wasn't the best, most attentive mother, but she was never abusive or neglectful. She tried her best to raise Kaylee while also maintaining a social life and keeping up with her self-image. She was continuously posting videos to social media, showing off her own lifestyle of partying and having fun, while also including videos of her dancing and spending time with Kaylee. However, according to Dan's mother, Lisa, as Kaylee got older, Nicola's parenting style started to change. Again, Nicola was never this overly affectionate, doting mother. But as time went on, she started to get more harsh and sometimes even cruel with how she treated Kaylee. While Dan said that he never personally witnessed Nicola abusing or berating Kaylee, Lisa noted multiple times in which Nicola laid a hand on her daughter or spoke to her in a very demeaning way. She said that there were incidents where she smacked Kaylee with an open hand to her arms and other times to her legs. Most of the time, Nicola would deliver just one slap, but sometimes it was multiple. When this would happen, of course, Kaylee would scream and cry, but Nicola acted either indifferent towards her or she would react with anger. 
When Kaylee would cry, Nicola resorted to shouting and name-calling, sometimes calling her a rat and a bitch. One time, Lisa did confront Nicola after witnessing her smack Kaylee, and all she had to say was, she's been a little shit this morning. Basically, what Lisa got from Nicola's tone was that she believed her daughter deserved it. She deserved the name-calling, the physical punishments, and the beratement, never feeling bad or guilty about what she was doing, which means, again, she saw nothing wrong with what she was doing. Most of the time, when she wasn't acting aggressively towards Kaylee, Nicola acted pretty indifferent towards her. According to Dan's mother, she never saw Nicola pick Kaylee up or hug her or kiss her. She kind of just acted like Kaylee wasn't there most of the time. Then, when Dan and Nicola moved out of Lisa's home and into their own flat, Lisa noticed that Nicola put no effort into making it a fun, comfortable space for Kaylee. In the living room, they had your typical setup, except there was a small chair and table tucked away by a wall. This was apparently where Kaylee would sit by herself to eat meals or play and draw by herself out of the way of the rest of the family. Her bedroom was also very bare. There were no photos or posters on the wall, no curtains or blinds on the windows. They didn't paint the room or put up any sort of decorations to personalize the room or make it comfortable for a little girl. There was basically just a mattress and that was pretty much it. The feeling that Lisa got from this was that Nicola didn't really care about making Kaylee's life rich and full. When Lisa asked Nicola about Kaylee's room, she always just said that they were redecorating the house and hadn't got around to doing Kaylee's room yet. Now, this whole idea of Nicola being an uncaring, cold mother isn't just from what Lisa said, it's kind of backed up by her own family. However, they claimed that she was never abusive or neglectful towards Kaylee, per se. Nicola's mother reported that she never witnessed any sort of aggression from Nicola. She was always sweet and gentle, mild manner with a lot of love to give. However, being that she was such a young mother, Nicola was still very much interested in going out with friends, meeting up with boys, and posting on social media. So basically what she's saying was that Nicola was irresponsible. She was still very immature, but nothing she ever did was intentionally trying to hurt her daughter. Now, before meeting Dan and while Kaylee was still a baby, Nicola still lived with her mother and sister. During that time, Nicola would often leave Kaylee alone at home, forcing either her mother or sister, Catherine, to watch her. She would often complain of her parental duties, such as changing diapers and feeding her. Then there was one incident where Nicola took Kaylee with her to the park to meet up with some boy, I don't know if this was Dan or someone else, but she didn't even put Kaylee in a coat. Then she stayed out with Kaylee until 11 p.m., way too late for her to be staying up without a coat in the cold weather. Of course, Nicola's mother was upset when she found out about this, and there was a whole fight that resulted. It was after this fight when she moved out of her family home and in with Dan and his mother. At that time, she pretty much completely cut her family off and wouldn't allow them to see Kaylee any longer. So, already we are seeing some concerning behaviors arrive. From the time that Kaylee was a baby, Nicola didn't seem super interested in being a mother. She was indifferent, only doing the bare minimum to basically just keep her daughter alive, often dumping the responsibility on other family members. Then, once she got in this fight and moved out, she cut off contact from the rest of her family. Once with Dan and Lisa, these behaviors of just being irresponsible and indifferent, they continued until they escalated to Nicola physically punishing and verbally berating Kaylee. Then, after two years with Dan, the pair split up and ended their relationship. At the time, Dan moved out of the flat allowing Nicola and Kaylee to continue living there. As I stated earlier, at some point while living with Dan and Lisa, Nicola became pregnant with her second child. However, I have not seen much reporting at all on when the baby boy was born or whose care he was in and is still under. There honestly isn't much mention of her second pregnancy to begin with. It's really only briefly mentioned in a few articles and I saw her pregnant belly in a couple of her videos, but otherwise, I have no idea what's going on with that baby. Either way, after Dan and Nicola's breakup, now 21-year-old Nicola was back out there and looking for a new man to share her and Kaylee's lives with. 
that is when 21 year old Callum Redfern entered the picture. Now, the nature of the relationship between Callum and Nicola differs depending on who you ask. Some say that they strictly had a sexual relationship, though text messages later uncovered would tell a slightly different story. I'm not sure exactly for how long Nicola and Callum knew each other, but during their time together, Nicola would exclaim to those around her just how much love she had for Callum. She was asking him to move in with her, sending him hearts all the time. She was constantly talking about him to friends and family, only ever really saying positive things about him, never mentioning anything about him being hurtful or mean or abusive towards Kaylee. So, for most people on the outside, it does appear that they had a little bit more going on than just a casual sexual relationship. That being said, obviously that meant that Nicola was allowing Callum in the home and around Kaylee. During this time, it was said that Nicola's behaviors towards Kaylee just became more neglectful, aggressive, and harsh. According to Kaylee's 17-year-old babysitter, Kaylee's hair was always naughty and unkept. Her pajamas were ill-fitting and often dirty. Once again, Kaylee's room was completely bare with a mattress that was also often dirty looking. Nicola never kept food in the kitchen and there was one time where apparently Kaylee went into the fridge looking for food and Nicola responded by grabbing her by the hair and yanking her away. Based on this, it appears that Kaylee was hungry and wasn't eating enough and that Nicola was withholding food from her. Then, according to neighbors who lived in the flat below Kaylee and Nicola, they would often hear Nicola responding to Kaylee's crying by yelling at her, saying things like, shut up, go away, or leave me alone, and calling her names such as effing brat. No one ever heard Nicola saying anything positive or kind. The neighbors also described her crying as often being in a fearful tone, which obviously was concerning. Many other residents in their same building said that it seemed like any time Kaylee cried, Nicola's response was to drown it out by blasting loud music. Then on one occasion, the downstairs neighbor heard a loud bang followed by Kaylee crying before Nicola apparently said, I'll just say she fell off the bed. Once again, all very concerning things that others are hearing, and it seems like no one is actually doing anything about it. By around 1 p.m. on August 8, 2020, both Kaylee and Nicola were captured on CCTV footage from the building where they lived. The two could be seen getting on an elevator where Nicola seems pretty disinterested in Kaylee. She gets into the elevator and starts looking at herself in the mirror, adjusting her top, and ignoring Kaylee as Kaylee looks up at her mother. You then see Nicola walking out of the building with three-year-old little Kaylee following closely behind until they reach the parking lot and eventually a trail that leads away from the building. They then return back by around 2.45 p.m., and once again, you see Nicola leading the way with Kaylee following. As they wait for the elevator, you see Nicola standing feet away from her daughter, just scrolling through her phone and checking her reflection as Kaylee looks up at her mom. Same thing in the elevator. This entire time, there's no physical contact between the two. Nicola doesn't bother to hold her hand or reach out to make sure she stays close. It's honestly painful to watch this little girl looking up to her mother, hoping for even a flicker of attention or even just acknowledging that she's there, but that never happens. Nicola just pretends that Kaylee isn't there, and I can just tell in that footage that Kaylee feels her mom ignoring her. She has no idea why. She's just looking to her mother for some sort of signal, but she isn't getting one. By that following morning, at around 11 a.m. on August 9th, 2020, Nicola dialed 911 to report that she had just found her daughter, three-year-old Kaylee, unresponsive in her bed. In the call, she sounded obviously distraught, screaming, and crying about what happened. She explained that when she woke up at around 10.30 that morning and went into her daughter's room, she took the duvet cover off only to realize that she was unresponsive and wouldn't move. Then when she tried to pick her up, she realized that Kaylee was completely stiff. 
She moved Kaylee to the floor before texting Callum and then trying to call her mother. Her mother didn't answer because she was at work, so after calling her mother, she called 999 to report what happened. At that time, she was told to start chest compressions and mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, which she said she was doing. But as she kept going with the chest compressions, she got more and more upset, realizing that Kaylee was not responding, that she was not going to be coming back. So on the call, she kept telling the operator she's gone and telling the operator that when she put her mouth up to Kaylee's, that her lips were cold and purple. By the time paramedics arrived to the scene, Nicola was sitting on the bed, visibly upset and shaking. She explained to the medics that two weeks prior, Kaylee had fallen off her play table and hit her head, but no other injuries were sustained. She did throw up after hitting her head, but she seemed fine after throwing up. She went on to act happy and content as she normally did. But then for the two weeks that followed, in hindsight, Nicola realized that Kaylee didn't have much of an appetite and wasn't really eating. Then she had thrown up a few times the night before, before she was put to bed by around 7.30. After going to bed, Nicola checked on her again at around 10.30 p.m., which was the last time she saw her before the following morning. So basically, she thinks that Kaylee may have randomly collapsed as a result of that head injury she sustained two weeks earlier. As she was explaining this, other first responders were going into Kaylee's room and got to work trying to revive her but they immediately noticed that she was completely rigid and cold to the touch. Her skin was blue and pale and her lips were purple. It was clear that Kaylee had been dead for quite some time. They did end up cutting open her pajamas to inspect her, and that is when they found multiple concerning injuries all over the little girl's body. Immediately, they noticed marks all over her chest and torso area. There were red marks and abrasions on her abdomen and chest, as well as clusters of bruises on her side. At this point, police had arrived and told paramedics that this was now a crime scene. Also at the scene, as I've been mentioning throughout the video, first responders noticed that Kaylee's bedroom was completely bare. No decorations, no rug on the floor, no curtains or blinds. But they noticed that there wasn't even a light in the room. Apparently, the bulb had gone out and Nicola never bothered to change it. Then, they saw that the mattress was bare. No sheets, no blankets, and the mattress was dirty. So, not only was there a complete lack of care or thought put into the room, but it also looked completely unkept, dirty, and dark not an environment for a growing girl, or really anyone for that matter. These injuries were obviously very concerning to first responders, and the story they were getting from Nicola made absolutely no sense. It was clear that something horrible had happened to her, and police knew that they needed to start an investigation into exactly what. Of course, with that, they started looking into the cell phone records from both Nicola and Callum to get an idea of what exactly their relationship with each other was like and what they may have spoken about in relation to little Kaylee. As I stated earlier, they found that Nicola was very much invested in the relationship with Callum, saying that she just loved him so much. But they also found some other very disturbing messages that shed a very clear light into how they felt about the baby girl. They found messages from July 24th, 2020, just over two weeks before Kaylee's death, where Nicola texted Callum, quote, I'm gonna kill her because she keeps leaving the room or going into the kitchen, so I've hit her one and smacked her for shitting in her nappy. Callum replied, quote, good, give her one from me. Nicola replied, I will, babe. Three days later, Callum texted Nicola, quote, I'm going to keep the little brat away from me, sick of your spunking daughter. So you can see that both Nicola and Callum just have this intense hatred and disdain for little Kaylee. You can see that they both see Kaylee as nothing but an inconvenience, someone who just gets in the way of Nicola living her life. And for whatever reason, Callum hates her just as much. Neither of them sees a problem with hitting or smacking Kaylee. In fact, they encourage each other to do it. 
It's just horrific to read these messages knowing that they're talking about such an innocent little baby. It's just such a punch to the gut. Then, after the discovery of three-year-old Kaylee's body, she was sent off to the medical examiner for an autopsy, and once again, what they found was horrifying and disturbing. In total, the ME found about 68 external injuries across her body. She had bruising all across her chest, likely caused by, quote, a violent assault. She also had finger marks on her face, likely caused by forceful squeezing or a slap. She also suffered multiple leg fractures, a broken sternum, as well as multiple rib fractures, some of which punctured her lung. Some of the fractures were older and healed, while some were fresh, indicating a long history of abuse. Other internal organs also suffered severe damage, likely caused by a kick, punch, or stomp to her chest and abdomen. The ME went on to state that the amount of injuries she had would equate to at least two blows, but likely far more than that. It was said that the sheer amount of injuries and the severity of them could be compared to falling 30 feet directly onto concrete or suffering from a car accident going 40 miles an hour. The amount of force used to beat this little girl is absolutely sickening. At this point, we know that poor Kaylee was beaten to death. After hearing from multiple witnesses who say that they saw Nicola treat Kaylee like an inconvenience who meant nothing to her, we can gather that Nicola may have been the one responsible. However, of course, when investigators spoke with Nicola, she pointed the finger squarely at Callum. She said that she would never lay a hand on her daughter, but that Callum had abused her in the past. She told investigators that there were times that she found bruises on her daughter and would confront Callum about them, but he would always give an excuse, such as she fell, and she thought nothing of it. Meanwhile, Callum came back and said that Nicola was the one causing the abuse. In terms of what happened in Kaylee's final hours, there is actually a third witness to some of what happened. On the evening of August 8th, 2020, Callum and a friend of his went over to Nicola's apartment with a bottle of vodka and plans to get crunk. While there, at around 5 p.m., Nicola and Callum gave Kaylee her dinner of chicken nuggets and chips. At that point, Nicola claims that she saw Callum smack Kaylee on her bottom after she bit him, but that's all she saw. After that, the adults drank and smoked weed until around 7.30 when Nicola put Kaylee to bed. Just a few minutes later, the friend heard Kaylee crying and whining in her room, saying that she wanted to come out of the room and keep playing. As Kaylee continued crying, Callum was in Nicola's bedroom, reportedly with plans of having sex. But the crying continued, and a few minutes later, the friend heard Callum exit Nicola's room. Ten minutes after that, he heard Callum yell to Nicola, Kaylee's been sick, let's get her in the bath. It's thought that she threw up in her bed at that point. After that, the friend heard no more crying with Callum and Nicola saying they put her to bed. Later that night, by around 8.30 p.m., both Callum and his friend left Nicola's place and went home. Once they left, Nicola continued messaging with friends online and posting selfies to her social media. Many of the messages were very normal, asking her friends if they liked her selfies and talking about an upcoming birthday she wanted to make plans for. She was up into the late night hours, all as Kaylee lied in bed, dying. It is believed that after they put Kaylee to bed, Callum and Nicola wanted to have sex, but they were interrupted by Kaylee's crying, so one or both of them went into Kaylee's room to shut her up. As I stated earlier, Nicola said that she saw Callum bump Kaylee just on the bottom at around dinner time, but that was likely not the case. She was probably beaten a lot more severely either at dinner and while she was interrupting them having sex or just at dinner or just when she was interrupting them. But either way, I think that she was beaten very severely and she got sick from her injuries while the friend was over. But in reality, we really don't know exactly what happened in that room. We don't know if she was beaten then or if she threw up because of her injuries and she just died in that moment or later in the night or if she had been beaten in that moment. We truly don't know. Now, the medical examiner stated that based on the beating she suffered, she could have been saved if either of them had called emergency services right away, but they didn't. They waited until Kaylee had been dead for 
hours before calling. It is estimated that she died at around midnight going into the 9th and first responders hadn't arrived until after 11 a.m. So she had been dead almost 12 hours before anyone came to help. Based on this, both Nicola and Callum were arrested and charged in connection with Kaylee's death. But because of the fact that this didn't appear intentional, they actually were not charged with the murder. Instead, they were only charged with allowing the death of a child as well as manslaughter, which basically means that their actions directly caused Kaylee's death, but that it wasn't intentional and they didn't mean to murder her. After being charged, it seems like Nicola and Callum were allowed to await their trials out of jail based on what I'm about to tell you next. It was around 39 days after Kaylee was found dead when then 23-year-old Nicola posted videos to her TikTok lip syncing and dancing as a way to apologize for what happened and memorialize her daughter. Obviously, this is in such bad taste and just further shows that Nicola never cared about Kaylee or being a mother. She only ever cared about her self-image and what others think of her. She never cared about Kaylee. The trial for both Nicola and Callum started in August of 2021. The prosecution was arguing that both Callum and Nicola are equally responsible for Kaylee's death. They both took part in beating her. They both abused her over time and both caused the injuries that ultimately led to her death. They brought forward multiple witnesses who spoke to Nicola's lack of interest in having a daughter. A few family members witnessed her slap or degrade Kaylee. Dan's mother, Lisa, talked about the treatment she witnessed. We heard from those neighbors who heard Nicola yelling at Kaylee or ignoring her anytime she cried. The medical examiner and Kaylee's pediatrician also took the stand to talk about her horrific injuries. As we heard from earlier, Kaylee suffered a fractured sternum, multiple broken ribs, and a broken leg. Again, all within various stages of healing. She also had extensive damage to her internal organs. This had to have been caused by a ferocious beating, not an accident. Kaylee's pediatrician also examined her external injuries after she was taken into the hospital after she was initially found, and her doctor said that the degree of injury Kaylee suffered was astonishing, absolutely dreadful. This was one of the worst cases he's seen in his career. Meanwhile, the defense for both Nicola and Callum was pointing the finger at each other. Nicola said that Callum was manipulative. Family and friends all said that Nicola lacks intelligence. She's a sweet girl who would never hurt Kaylee, but boy did she have a bad taste in men. She let Callum into her life, who took advantage of Nicola and Kaylee. Callum got tired of Kaylee being around, so he abused her. He also couldn't control his rage around her, so he lashed out at her. There were times where Nicola noticed some bruises and felt that Callum wasn't treating her well, but Nicola was either too scared to do anything about it or just took Callum's word for it when he said she just fell. This is reported differently depending on what source you look at, so I think both were probably argued. The defense said that yes, Nicola loves posting to social media and looking at her phone constantly. She may not have been the best mother due to her lack of intelligence but that didn't mean that she killed Kaylee or even wanted her dead or even took part in abusing her. She was manipulated by Callum, who is solely responsible for Kaylee's death. On the other hand, Callum said that he was the one that was manipulated by Nicola. Callum's father spoke out and said that Callum is basically just a kid who doesn't know any better. He was only interested in Nicola for sex. He didn't want any sort of romantic relationship with her. He was immature, not mature enough to be manipulating anyone. At the end of the day, it was Nicola who abused her own daughter and got Callum on her side, encouraging him to take part in the hate and abuse. He was manipulated into all of this. However, despite what either side says, we can see from those text messages that Callum and Nicola both spoke so poorly of Kaylee. Nicola admitted to hitting Kaylee herself in those text messages. Then, based on how Callum responded, you can assume that he most likely had hit her as well. To me, it is possible that Callum may have only been interested in having sex with Nicola. However, 
little Kaylee probably often got in the way of just that. So I could see that causing Callum to become upset and wanting Kaylee out of the picture enough to take part in the abuse or to even just lash out when he became upset and started hitting her because of that. What I'm trying to say is I don't think the defense of, oh, he only wanted her for sex means that he couldn't have abused Kaylee. It just means that he probably hit her for getting in the way of him getting what he wanted. I think that they both saw Kaylee as an annoyance who just got in the way of them having sex and doing what they wanted. So I think they beat her repeatedly over time for doing just that. And on the night of August 8th, they took it too far and caused her death. That is what I think happened. And I think they are both equally responsible. Throughout the trial, the jury would hear so much graphic detail of what happened to little Kaylee. They had to take multiple breaks just to collect themselves because as you can imagine, hearing what happened to her, then seeing the pictures and hearing the arguments and excuses both sides gave, it's such a kick to the stomach. At the end of the trial, the jury was sent off for deliberations and when they came back, they found that both Callum and Nicola were guilty of allowing the death of a child as well as manslaughter, while Nicola was also convicted of child cruelty. For these charges, Nicola was sentenced to 15 years behind bars, while Callum was given a sentence of 14 years, which is just appalling to me. These short-ass sentences coming out of the UK are absolutely atrocious. They happen so frequently in these cases, yet every time I see such short sentences, they never fail to surprise me. In the sentencing remarks, the judge said that he believed that Callum was the dominant person in the relationship. He saw Nicola as a source of money, since she was receiving government benefits, and he also saw her as just someone to have sex with. Meanwhile, Nicola was infatuated with him and would do anything to get his approval. On the night of Kaylee's death, the two wanted to have sex, but were interrupted by Kaylee, who wanted to play. We don't know exactly what happened next, other than the fact that she suffered severe injuries, which led to her death. Both Callum and Nicola played equal parts in Kaylee's death, thus convicting both of them on their charges. Of course, in the aftermath of this, those who loved and cherished Kaylee have been left with such huge holes in their lives, especially Dan Gregory, who was in her short life for a few years and played such a big role in helping raise her. But at the same time, we're also left with so many questions and concerns. I'm sure as we went through the video and heard how many people saw the abuse and heard how Nicola spoke to Kaylee, you wonder why no one did anything about it. That was something I was wondering too, and part of me feels like all of those witnesses bear a little bit of responsibility for what happened because they did not act. There was only one instance in which I heard of anyone trying to get help for Kaylee. Nicola's mother said that she tried reporting this to CPS, but it's unclear whether it was ever followed up on. This case happened right in the midst of the COVID lockdowns, so it's likely that the case wasn't followed up on or handled properly because of that. But again, I feel like had more of these witnesses stepped up to try and help Kaylee by making reports, bringing it to their attention over and over again, maybe they would have done more but it seems like nobody stepped in to help this beautiful little girl, despite so many people seeing the obvious red flags. It's heartbreaking. It's also incredibly frustrating to know that both Callum and Nicola will be out in their late 30s. They will both have long lives to live after murdering a sweet, innocent child, and that is just not fair after robbing Kaylee of her life. These short sentences will never fail to piss me off. All I can hope is that they learn their lesson in jail. I hope they suffer every second they're behind bars, and when they are let out, I hope they don't hurt anybody else. But I don't have too high of hopes for that. With all of that being said, as I finish out this case, I just want to leave you all with something to take away from Kaylee's story, and that is if you see something, say something. If you witness a parent treating their child as so many people saw Nicola treating Kaylee, do something about it. Don't just hear a mother screaming at her child and calling her nasty names. Call your local child protective services. If you see a parent slapping their child, pulling their hair, or in any other way abusing them, call someone, alert someone. Because even though CPS might not always help, it's better than doing nothing. We have no idea if that would have helped in this case because no one ever seemed to try. So again, 
if you see something, say something. But that is where I'm going to leave today's case. Of course, it was a tragic one and very heartbreaking, but I hope that we can all take what happened to poor little Kaylee and use it to help keep our loved ones safe in our own lives. But with that, I want to hear what you all think about this case. Do you think that both Nicola and Callum are responsible for Kaylee's death or was one manipulating the other? Why do you think no one reported anything throughout Kaylee's life and what do you think of their sentences and their charges? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts you have in the comments below. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure to follow my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. All will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill out the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.